Thanks for joining me today. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the new features and changes to version 2.1 of Rebel. Rebel is a digital painting application that does a great job of simulating fluid media such as watercolor, and most notably in version 2.1, the watercolor has been improved in regards to wet on wet painting. But there's lots of other great features that have been added as well, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. You may notice when you launch Rebel for the first time, there's the new artwork page, and this has been updated. You can now switch between print layouts, screen layouts, and favorites. Screen is really handy if you're working with, let's say, a Cintiq or something, and you want your canvas to fit perfectly on that screen, then you could choose from these presets. Or if you're gonna be printing, then you could choose the print presets. You also have access to your width and height in pixels. You can also see it in pixels, centimeters, and inches over here, and you can switch between those. You can change the orientation, you can change the DPI. You can also open artwork and you can open recent artwork here. If you want to add your own presets, you can simply type them in here and go ahead and click the plus. And then of course you have access to your canvas and you can choose whether or not you want to show this at startup. So I'm going to do an HD canvas. I'll go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, this fits really nicely on my screen. Now I can go ahead and test the improved watercolors. I'm going to make sure the watercolor category is selected. I'll choose the first preset. We want to make sure that it has some water or some wetness to it. Let's pick a color here and let's paint a test stroke. And we want to make sure that our water is running so we can go to our tilt panel here, click the center button and then just drag down to have our tilt go down. Let's go ahead and add some blue to that right next to it and we'll see how it blends together. And you can see that when you do wet on wet, the watercolor itself trickles together and blends together in a much more natural way. I'm going to go ahead and hit F on my keyboard to fast dry. You can also see that it kind of starts to go into the texture of the paper as well. Let's go ahead and try another example here. I'm going to add a lot of water. I'll put in kind of a greenish yellow color like this, and maybe we'll have some darker green go into that. We'll see how that looks. Go ahead and fast dry it with F. And I have to say that in regards to wet on wet blending, the watercolor has been improved. Another thing that's been improved about the watercolor is the sensitivity of the water slider here. So it starts to take effect a little bit more evenly as you increase the amount of water. So if we do a few sample strokes here, you can see that each one is getting progressively more wet. The next new enhancement is to the brush renderer. So I'm gonna select the pencil tool. And one of the issues that was going on in older versions of Rebel is when you draw with the pencil tool or a very thin brush, you get a little bit of wobbliness to your line. It's more noticeable if you go to the navigator and you zoom way out and you draw align very slowly. We zoom back in, then you can see that the line looks like I drank too much coffee. Now this isn't necessarily a flaw of Rebel per se, because this is an effect caused by the drawing tablet, but most art applications have a smoothing setting that'll allow you to compensate for that wobble. And so in version 2.1 of Rebel, we can now go to File Preferences, under Tools, and Lazy Mouse, we can increase the strength, and if we increase that to 10, and we draw a line up close, you can see that it's very smooth. And if we zoom out with the navigator, we draw that same line, and we zoom back in to judge the quality, you can see that it's still very smooth. Now, if you draw really slowly, it is still a little bit wobbly. However, if you're sketching at a normal speed and you're not doing it too slowly, then you probably wouldn't notice any wobble at all. Another great feature that's been added to Rebel 2.1 is autosave. You can find those settings under File, Preferences. If we look under General, and down at the bottom, you can see that you can turn autosave on and off and you can change the interval. In order to find the autosave location, we go to the Help menu and we go to Show Library Folder. That'll pop up in this window here and we can look under Autosave and you can see all of our autosaves. Now it'll save up to 20 versions of each document. So if Rebel crashes or something bad happens, you'll have these autosaves that you can go back to. Another change you might notice is that the user interface which is everything that you can see surrounding the canvas here, has been updated to make it a little bit more compact. You can also change some of the properties of the palettes and icons like you couldn't before. For example, in color set, we can use large or small icons. If we look over here at the brushes, we can also change how the icons appear. If we go to the top right sub dialog and we look under icons, we can have an image, we can have an image and a stroke, or we can have an image, a stroke, and a name. You can also very easily copy brush presets in between tools. So these are tools up here or different media. So for example, if I had a watercolor brush, such as this mop, 
that I wanted to turn into an oil painting brush, all I have to do is right click on the mop, choose copy brush preset, go over to my oil tool, right click and choose paste brush preset. So now I can use that mop with oil paint. Here's another example of one I pasted in called splat, which was also a watercolor brush. And if I put this in, it creates those splats, but with oil paint rather than watercolor paint. Now you might also notice that I have these different groups here. Now I have one that's called custom and I have one that's called default. Default is just a default set of brushes, but now you can go ahead and create groups of different brushes and paper textures and things like that. So I have this custom group that I created here. To create a custom group, you just simply right click and you can choose add group. Then you can double click and you can give it a name. And then you can easily drag and drop to move brushes in between these different groups. You can also bring in papers. So for example, I could go to the help menu, show library folder, I could look under papers, and also add it in Rebel 2.1, I can drag and drop content directly into Rebel. So I could take this Canvas 2, drag it right over here and drop it, and now I can select Canvas 2 in order to get some canvas texture when I paint. You can collapse the group to just kind of condense it down, or if you want to delete the group, you can right click on it and choose Remove Group. Now if you're happy with the way you set up this layout, you can also go to the Window menu and you can choose Export Layout, which will save your layout as a file. I'll go ahead and save it as Custom Rebel Layout. And now if I do something like change to a new computer or reinstall Rebel, I can just simply go to Window, Import Layout, and I can load that layout file. And that'll load all of the customization that I've saved. Now one thing you might notice as I've been painting, there is this little line that's on my cursor now, and that represents the angle of flat edge brushes. In Rebel 2.1, you can now change that cursor by going to File, Preferences. And if we look under Tools, then we can choose the painting cursor, which can be a circle with direction, a regular circle, a circle with a crosshair, or just a crosshair. So for example, if I wanted something very, very precise, I could choose crosshair. And now if I'm drawing with my pencil, then I can see exactly where that line's gonna be. But I don't have that circle showing the diameter of the brush. Cloning or image tracing has been improved in Rebel 2.1. We can now work with clone sources a little more easily. For example, I can drag and drop an image asset here that I want to clone from. This is a painting of an apple. Go ahead and place it in and you can see that it comes in as a layer. And I'm going to bring in one more image, which is a picture of a moth. I'm going to go ahead and select the transform tool. I'll go ahead and just move the moth over here, hit enter. I'll go to the apple layer and I will move that over here and hit enter. And let's say we want to create a cloning or a tracing from these images, which means that we'll be able to sample the color of the clone source while we paint. So if you've never done this before, that might sound a little complicated, but I'll show you how it's done. First, we want to create a layer for our paint to go onto. So we'll do that in the layers palette here by clicking this plus button, and I'll just call this paint. Now the moth and the apple are going to be clone sources. So what we can do to designate that as a clone source or a tracing layer is click the little T. So I'll click the T for the apple. And then we want to tell Rebel where we want to clone to using the little dot icon. So for example, the paint layer will enable the dot icon. We will disable it for this layer. So we're making sure that the cloned paint is only going to go to this layer from this layer here. If we go back to the apple layer, we reduce the opacity of it to where we can just faintly see it and then back to the paint layer and we select a brush, let's say this flat brush and we paint, then you're going to see that as I paint, I'm getting the colors that are underneath. Those are being picked up and I can very easily clone this apple if I want to. I don't have to choose the colors underneath, I just have to simply paint over the image. You could even use a bigger brush just to make shorter work of it here. But each time you pick up your brush and put it down, Rebel is looking at the colors that are underneath and it's putting those in. So I'm not gonna spend all day doing this. This is just a quick example to give you an idea of how it works. But you can see in principle how you could create a cloned painting very easily. Now, if I want to go back to painting with regular paint, I just need to turn off cloning by clicking the dot icon on the paint layer. And now I can paint with whichever color I feel like. It could be this yellow or white or whatever I want. Now, if I want to use a different clone source to clone from, for example, this moth, I could select the moth layer, select the transform tool, bring the moth over here, hit enter on my keyboard to place it. I'll go ahead and click the T on the moth layer to designate that that's now the clone source. Then I'll create a new layer for the paint. I'll click the dot icon to designate that as the target for the paint of the clone source. Make sure that moth layer is dimmed so that I can see what I'm doing. Go to the moth paint layer and I can simply paint in my wings now and I can get all of those nice colors that are underneath.
Now when you're done with the clone sources, you can just simply hide those layers or delete them. And there you go, you've got your cloned painting. Now obviously this was just a really quick sloppy example, but you can feel free to experiment at home and try your own clone painting. Another feature of the tracing mode is that once a layer has been designated as the tracing layer, you aren't able to accidentally paint on it. And you can see there's this little lock icon showing that I'm not allowed to paint on that layer. So we'll need to go ahead and just turn off tracing if we want to be able to delete that layer or do anything to it. The next new feature we'll look at is the ability to choose the number of colors you get when you create a color set from an image. So we'll go to color set. We'll choose create color set from image file. I'm going to go ahead and choose 16 colors. We'll choose this same image that I have on screen here, and it creates a color set of paint swatches that match the colors that we see in our reference image. So for example, I have a red and then a lot of greens. Now I'm not getting all of the colors that I should be getting here, so I may want to just experiment with the different color set values. Maybe 25 colors will work better. And now we can see it encompasses a wider range. I get more of those oranges, and that would probably work a lot better for making a painting. Another great improvement to Rebel 2.1 is the addition to touch, which allows you to zoom in and out without accidentally rotating your canvas. As you can see here, I'm on my Cintiq 27, I'm zooming in and out using my touch with my fingers. If I go to File Preferences and then Tablet, here's the option to use two fingers for canvas rotation. And if I turn that on, now I can rotate the canvas. So if you don't like that you accidentally rotate your canvas when you're trying to zoom in and out, you can go ahead and disable this feature. And the last feature that I'll be showing you deals with transformations. You can now transform multiple layers simultaneously. So I can select layer three, which is this cherry on the right. Hold shift, select the one on the left. Then I can go to layer, transform layer. It puts a bounding box around both of those layers. And now I can scale them down or squish them and squash them or rotate them if I want to simultaneously. I can hit enter to apply my transformation. So that isn't absolutely every single new feature in Rebel 2.1. You can get a list of all of those changes on Rebel's website, but those are really the most important ones in my opinion. If you enjoyed my demonstration of the new features in Rebel 2.1, take a quick second to like this video. And if you want to see free digital art tutorials like this each week, make sure to click that subscribe button and enable notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.